Hello everyone. I had a work project not too long ago that was perfect for showing off a whole bunch of different work holding techniques. So I took a bunch of pictures and videos and I figured I would do another interesting work holding techniques video. If you haven't seen the first two that I've done, check the links down in the description. The part we had to make was this cast aluminum bracket that was for a cubicle farm that they were doing in one of the offices at work. The company that sold us the cubicle parts shorted us a whole bunch of brackets and the project needed to get finished pretty quickly. So the project coordinator came over to the machine shop and asked if we could help them out and of course we said yes. The part in question was die cast aluminum and we just went ahead and machined it out of solid stock because obviously we're not equipped to do any die casting. But this is the original and it's a part to pull panels together as well as allow a little decorative top valence to snap onto the cubicles so that you can't see any of the fasteners. The important bits are those two vertical tabs that you can see on the right hand side as well as that little hook on the very end and then of course the whole locations. We made 25 of these so we utilized stops extensively on this project. You can see a vice stop on the left hand side of our blank. Of course we made all of our blanks slightly long and when we drilled and counterbored those two holes that you can see we offset them slightly inwards so that when we did this particular operation every side would be machined. Another nice thing about our setup here is that we're gripping onto what will be machined away in the next operation. Our depth of cut is actually set lower than what we need, so when we do flip this over and grip onto these newly machined faces, uh, there will be no steps. It will be nice clean lines all over the part. This technique is used extensively in CNC machining, but it's equally at home in manual machining. This is the sort of thing that allows you to make relatively complicated parts and then just flip it over and machine away what you don't need. This is all being done on a Prototrack bridge port, by the way. It's a two-axis machine, conversational CNC controls, very easy to program. This next part is cutting two small steps on the top of the part. What we did was set it up so that the quill all the way up would cut the first step, and then when we dropped it down to the quill stop, it would cut the depth for the second step. Doing this sped up things a lot because we didn't have to constantly be looking at the digital readout and measuring every single part. Now we've set up for our second operation and as you can see we've switched to a table stop that's locating against one of those freshly machined surfaces. This operation is cutting everything on the bottom side. So this is actually the height of those two pegs that I mentioned earlier. And again, we had the quill all the way up for this particular depth, and then we dropped it down against a quill stop for this, which is machining out the shape of those pegs, as well as the hook, and machining off all of the extra material that we don't need. I should point out that we ran that entire first program on all 25 parts before we moved on to this, which is a totally separate program. When we flip this over, we use the holes that were drilled through the part to set our origins for this side. We knew exactly where those holes were in relation to the geometry on the other side of the part, so we found the one closest to the stop and set our locations accordingly. At the end of this operation, the pegs are complete and the hook is totally roughed in. The only thing it needs is the undercut and a slight bevel machined into it. We simplified the geometry of the pegs slightly. Uh, they were originally this strange little elongated L shaped, uh, but we couldn't really see any reason for that shape whatsoever. So we made it easier on ourselves and just made them little rectangles. Now the machine's just taking off all that extra aluminum that we no longer need. While it's doing that, I'd like to say hello to Philip Hahn. He's my latest patron over there on Patreon, and I'd like to say that I really appreciate his support. If you want to be one of the cool kids like Philip, why don't you head on over to Patreon and check it out. The link's down there in the description. While you're down there, leave a comment with your favorite office-related joke. You know, since we're making cubicle parts here. 
Whichever joke I like the best, I will pin up at the top and give you a place of honor among all of the other comments. Of course, if you don't have any office-related jokes, no worries, just make fun of my crappy handheld cell phone camera footage. I do want to acknowledge and apologize for that, but you know, I don't bring my camera to work with me. Sorry. This next bit is actually cutting a small step on each side of the part. And this is what that decorative valence that I talked about earlier actually snaps onto. Again, we went ahead and ran all 25 parts with that previous operation that you just saw. You can probably tell that from the huge pile of chips on the table. Then we set all of them up again. We used the exact same origin and just wrote a really simple milling program to mill the step on one side, zip over to the other side, and mill the other step. It made really short work of all of the parts. Here we're making the undercuts that form the hook. And to do this, we're using a very slightly modified Woodruff key cutter. Uh, the cutter itself is wide enough to fit in between those pegs, but you can tell that we had to modify it a little bit. We, uh, we relieved that neck so that it would get all the way in as well as all the way down to the bottom. We had to do this in two passes because the Woodruff key cutter wasn't quite thick enough. Um, so we used the same technique where we had the quill up for the top of the cut and then the quill down against a quill stop uh, for the bottom of the cut. We also utilized a stop on the table itself so that it limited our travel to the end of the cut. That way we didn't have to continually look at the digital readout to determine where to stop. This operation was strictly manual, no programming involved whatsoever. The hook is slightly beveled at the end and that helps draw the two parts together. So we whipped up a quick fixture that we just held the part on with C-clamps it had a little shoulder there to keep the depth consistent. The hook also had little bevels on the side and we put those in by hand with this air belt sander. It's good for deburring as well as quick stuff like this. Lastly, we threw all the parts into a vibratory tumbler with ceramic media on it to deburr them. There were a lot of burrs from all the machining and surprisingly, that took them all off within about 10 minutes. We could only fit eight parts at a time into our tumbler, but it still saved a tremendous amount of deburring time that otherwise would have been done with files and deburring tools. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please consider hitting like and subscribe down below, and thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time.